everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. We've uh we've kind of taken a few days off here. It's been about four days since we've done a video, which is pretty insane to think about considering uh, how many videos we often do. But there's a little bit of a break needed. It's necessary on mine for sure. But uh, the weather, however, has not taken a break. And while severe weather hasn't been incredibly crazy towards the US, there's been some stuff going on towards Canada. And then also a big topic has been the wildfires. And this has been a problem for a while. We normally don't really talk about that as much on here. And uh, I think I'm going to try to start talking about it just a little bit more, especially for the notable risk, especially after what we saw recently with that uh, fire tornado that was over towards California. It's crazy to see that. And those actually can get pretty strong, too. Um, just, there's a couple of theories even that I'm thinking about now that kind of make my mind shudder at the thought of it. But overall though right now as we take a look at our fire and smoke map here there is a lot going on out towards the western half of the u.s especially over towards the northwest southwest is very active too with wildfires and we hope that we can start to catch a break here for some of these areas we will get a break over towards the northwest though i'm a little bit more concerned about this area in particular especially in the days ahead the problem that we have towards this region here is the fact that we're expecting much more in the way of excessive heat we even have a high risk for excessive heat as we get towards the beginning of next month here so concerns are up for this region as well there's even threats of dry thunderstorms or pyrocumulus clouds basically uh, dry thunderstorms that produce cloud to ground lightning and those cloud to ground strikes given the dry conditions that already exist can create additional fires so if you're even whether so even at this point whether or not you're within the risk for dry thunderstorms at this point or excessive heat you're over towards anywhere i would say west of the rockies right now really uh just be conscientious of what you burn or just try to refrain from burning if ne unless absolutely necessary i'm pretty sure there's already burn restrictions in a lot of these areas let's hope that we i just hope that we are making sure that we abide to those we do not want to start additional wildfires there's already enough i mean look at the map here but yeah excessive heat is going to be a big problem out west and even over towards the northeast for a short period of time here there may be about up to a week here though towards the beginning of next month where we could have a pretty notable problem towards the region here there's even going to be little heat outbreaks here and there across parts of the southeast, even over towards the Mississippi Delta and the Ohio Valley as time goes on. I don't think these threats will be quite as significant as the moderate and the high risk, of course, but we'll have to see how the forecast models trend because, as we know, things often change pretty quickly with weather. But one thing that is definitely capturing my attention here is looking at the temperature outlook. We see the areas of interest regards to the uh, temperature outlook above average temperatures it's not very often that you see the 80 to 90 percentile pop up here and whenever you do within the 6 to 10 day out look that's a uh, pretty alarming signal especially considering where this one is where the wildfire threat is pretty high and we're already dealing with ongoing wildfires here as well so my concern definitely exists with that region and also towards the northeast while I do think moisture is going to be a lot more sufficient here and we're going to have a little bit more of an active weather pattern here, the heat still will be on towards this region. So uh, if you have any neighbors, especially those that are elderly towards this region, make sure you're checking in on them. And if you do plan to be outside, especially if you're an outdoor worker like I have been over recent years, uh, definitely make sure that you are staying properly hydrated and taking uh, rest periods more often. You don't want to get heat stroke or heat exhaustion, anything of the like. It is not a fun experience. I can tell you that firsthand. Um, as a whole here, though, as we go further off to the south here, actually, and it's a surprise to see this to a point, uh, you can see that the above average temperature probabilities, while they still exist, they're much lower over here. So we aren't going to have as much of a uh, excessive heat outbreak towards this region, but you still need to be kind of following the same protocols as up towards the northeast because normally our average temperatures are much higher down here than they are up there so of course that's going to reflect in the probabilities and make them look a little bit different 
Also, let's make a note of Alaska here, looking like they're well below average for a large part of the region here. Hopefully we can get some of that cool air to come into play for the lower 48 here. Maybe we can get some increased weather activity as well to try to slow things down just a little bit. We don't want the severe weather necessarily, but we definitely want to see more rain over towards the northwest, also towards the southwest as well to help reduce the wildfires over there. And fortunately, as we look at the precipitation outlook, a lot of the precipitation is going to be out towards the east. We've had plenty of rain over here, and it looks like we will be getting more. Over towards Alaska, it looks like that's going to be a pretty similar deal. Unfortunately, though, the storm track is favoring much further north towards Can the uh, Canadian prairies, so to speak, over towards British Columbia, etc. So unfortunately, this leaves a lot of the northwest on the dry side of things, sadly, and with our wildfire threat. Unfortunately, I, as much as I hate to say it, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, we may see more of it. Let's hope that, again, we can help get these wild, we can hopefully get some of these wildfires under control. And then eventually, we might be able to catch a break from Mother Nature here to go along with that. There is some good news, however, in all of this. Over towards the southwest, we do have an above average chance of precip over there. There are a lot of wildfires over towards Southern California as well, so maybe we can gain a little bit of a better footing on these as well we're just hoping for the best really at this point towards it really both of these regions here but as we continue to go forward severe weather threat while there's not anything of major significance right now we do have a marginal and slight and even a slight risk for tomorrow and some of these do have a cheeky little uh, 2% tornado threat area. This has been the year where the uh, overperforming 2% uh, area comes into play a lot. So just because it's only a 2%, don't think of it as only a 2%. Think of it as, hey, there's still a chance that you could get a quick spin up. So just keep your eyes on the weather if you're over towards the uh, northern tier of the plains here, over towards the northern tiers of the Midwest, right on that U.S.-Canadian border. Over towards Canada, actually, it's actually really busy right now. Maybe, like I said, there could even be a point within the next couple of days we may even do a live stream there if conditions are right. But right now, kind of leaning towards it not being a thing. But as we go towards tomorrow, this is a slight risk again. Cheeky little 2% tornado threat. There always is a chance that you could get an upgrade to a 5. But right now, I'm kind of leaning towards it not doing much of anything. Right now, we're looking at the wind and hail threats being the driver for this slight risk here. I love how this also kind of looks like a uh, foot here. Actually, it looks a lot like a foot, but this is going to be what our wind and hail threat is, where our wind and hail threat is going to be greatest. Of course, over towards Grand Forks and Bismarck are going to be our point of interest for the wind and hail threat. But just like I said, where this extends outward towards the west, we could even see parts of Salt Lake City, even all the way into Porto, uh, Pocatello, excuse me, Pocatello, um, Idaho coming into play here and a good chunk of uh, Wyoming, even parts of uh, West and even central parts of Nebraska, even parts of Kansas and Colorado going into the mix as well as the Dakotas and Minnesota here. Go towards the following day, pretty broad uh, marginal risk for severe weather at the moment coming into play for the Midwest and parts of the Northern Plains once again. And then on days four through eight, Upper level setup is an incredible large scale ascent. Large scale ascent seems to be somewhat limited to a point, but still severe weather is going to be possible within the next week or so. So we continue to go forward here, though. We're going to actually take a look at the wildfire threat, and part of my concern as to why we may have that increased wildfire threat is partially due to the dry thunderstorm threat. Now, keep in mind that this is variable. These are isolated dry thunderstorms. So there's a chance that these don't develop. You have to have uh, pretty specific conditions for dry thunderstorms. I actually think I'm going to do a uh, Weather Nerd 101 video on this soon. But for the dry thunderstorm threat for today, for example, we're looking at Salt Lake City, mainly over towards central parts of Utah right now for that. And then just, just based off of sheerly dry conditions as a whole here, we're looking at parts of Oregon, California, and Nevada. You also have Idaho and Montana in the mix for that. Go towards the following day. That isolated dry, uh, dry thunderstorm threat or pyrocumulus threat as we can call it as well, actually increases in size over towards the Northwest. 
And again, this is why I have such a heightened concern for wildfires over here. Dry thunderstorms, as we mentioned before. Uh, very little to no rain from those thunderstorms, but plenty of lightning. And of course, already uh, pre-existing dry conditions can help spark additional wildfires that continue to be the case towards these regions here. And also the elevated threat to help along with that, unfortunately. So we continue to go forward. This is looking at day three. We have that uh, increased wind, low relative humidity, and dry thunderstorm threat again over towards Vegas, also over towards Cedar City and Utah to go along with that. So concern exists right now towards the central parts of the west and also the northwest for increased wildfire threat. But as we continue to go forward here, right now the probability is too low currently, thankfully, for these regions here. So in the short term it looks like no immediate areas of focus for wildfires so we continue to go forward here we can actually go ahead and take a look at our weather models across the board here you can actually see our current storm system which is going to help uh, introduce our severe weather for our next couple of days here and even beyond that really if i move this forward you can see this storm system pretty stout storm system i would say for this time of year for canada so this is also going to help uh, increase severe storm coverage towards the prairies region we can eventually see increase in storm coverage of course towards the northern plains in the midwest as well as we continue to go forward like i said this isn't the most incredible upper level storm pattern but it's still enough to get showers and storms to spark off and if we can get enough dynamics coming into play what be it thermodynamics or just kinematics in play we could still get some severe weather not expecting a full-scale outbreak, but nonetheless, though, that one sneaky storm during the summertime can still do damage, so you have to always be careful of that. Another reason why it's interesting to look at this upper-level pattern is actually because we'll begin to see this ridge start to build out towards the west as time goes on. You can still see these little areas where we get these little um, small short waves and troughs here and there, but this ridge right here you can see it based off the clockwise spin here anticyclonic spin and this is where we're going to have our heat dome here unfortunately and this is where we end up having much more in the way of issues for wildfires depending on uh, how things pan out of course we can end up getting our share of dry thunderstorms as we go through a good chunk of the first part of august here heading towards the first half also with that ridge it's also going to help push that storm track north so this may lessen rain chances as time goes on towards the eastern half of the u.s as well but things are still to be determined with that as we continue to go forward here this is us looking at our dew point content we're really looking at this more to kind of shift gears into the severe weather outlook but we can also take a look out towards the west these are uh, relatively low dew points over here that are over towards like maybe 30 20 sometimes 40 degrees here still pretty dry towards these regions you can actually even see it right here as we look towards tomorrow tomorrow afternoon or actually this is today excuse me but you can see here dew points are exceptionally low we're getting into the low 20s and in some cases we're even getting into the teens as you can see here 17 degrees fahrenheit and dew point is extremely dry we're going to continue to see that unfortunately be the case over towards a large part of this region here relative humidity is also be low as well Thankfully, though, towards these areas, we do get a slight increase in dew points, which should somewhat help with the wildfire issue. Not as much in the way of dry substance to burn in the short term, but unfortunately, this does not look like it lasts towards this region here. Eventually, we're struggling with those dry dew points once again. Now, looking towards the severe weather side of things, we want these we want the uh, increased moisture here to help fuel those thunderstorms. We end up seeing an incredible surge of moisture that goes all the way up into Canada right now. And this continues to be the case as that storm system moves on. It's pulling in a lot of moisture, which is making the severe weather threat much more plausible and well, possible. As time goes on, we continue to see an incredible plume of moisture coming from the Gulf right now. The Gulf of Mexico has just been pretty much nonstop throughout the course of the year really and this continues to really be the case here and this is also another reason why i have my share of concerns towards the northeast because during those hot days we do see a decent amount of moisture over towards the region here and that's going to make what's already hot and uncomfortable temperatures feel even worse so if 
you get we're getting into the 80s and 90s towards this region with six degree dew points could make for rough time, rough sledding over towards this region here so as we continue to look at said temperatures for example i don't know why we moved all the way that all the way out towards 204 hours but as you can see right now we're uh, containing a lot of that heat out towards the plain states and out towards the west eventually however we start to see that heat push out to the east we still see that heat begin to really to uh, dominate out west and we really start to see it take over as we get towards the end of the month here and starting and then eventually we see it really start to take over as we get to the start of august you can even see the uh, triple digit temperatures over here towards idaho and parts of also washington even oregon which is crazy to see um i don't usually i'm, I'm not used to really seeing temperatures that, uh this hot over towards these regions here it's pretty crazy to think about it's a lot of mountainous terrain where we're getting into the 80s and the 90s here pretty easily and even going beyond of course over towards the southwest and over towards the southern plains we're going to be baking of course southeast is still going to be pretty hot as well as time goes on here you can even start to see the northeast starting to get into the uh, mid to upper 90s here too so we start out the month so like i said this is where the concern really starts to come into play for the region here then eventually we see that oppressive heat start to even make its way into the northern plains we're even potentially going to see some one teens in here past what well, or uh well exceeding 110 degrees over here towards south dakota north dakota as we get towards the fourth next month here then as we continue to go forward we see that heat continue to be an issue across the board especially over towards the central plains here so like i said the best way to combat the heat as we all know make sure you stay hydrated take more breaks and just make sure that you are monitoring your overall condition here worst thing you can do is uh just kind of play it off i've done i've been uh, foolish enough to do it myself because i've worked outside over the last close to 10 years really at this point now but yeah don't play around with the heat make sure you're staying hydrated electrolytes are important also if you don't have to be outside i just urge you not to go out really but as we continue to go forward here we can see that the heat continues to be prevalent even in the morning hours because we're looking in the morning of august 11th here and you can already see low temperatures in the 80s over towards the central and southern plains here so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other models here before we close this one out this is a little bit longer of a video in this case here because it's a little bit more to cover but this is going to be kind of reflecting where our shower and storm threat is going to be greatest as well as our chances for severe weather this is just based off of the lightning flash density over here so you can see there is a uh, pretty notable area over here towards canada there are chances of storms that pop up over here and as time goes on as we go further along you can see those lightning flash densities increasing over towards north dakota parts of south dakota and also towards the southeast as we continue to go forward here we eventually start to even see that become more prevalent as we get into Saturday night. Starting to see the south become more active as time goes on. Eventually, as this storm system moves out, the shower and storm threat increases over towards the southeast. It's going to be harder to read what goes on over here in regards to the lightning flash density because the dry thunderstorm threat, it kind of works weird. Like I said, we'll have a whole other video kind of discussing how that comes into play. We'll probably see it either sometime towards the start of this week or maybe next week but as we continue to go on here you can see if you're east of the rockies weather pattern is going to still be pretty active but not necessarily active in means of severe weather per se but still over the course of the next 10 days still have to watch out for those pesky summertime storms here and that even becomes a thing over towards the northeast so as we continue to go on here towards our last little bit this is going to be where our shower and storm threat is going to be greatest across the board you can see that there's a lot of activity of course towards the east especially the southeast you can see up towards the northern states especially the north central states it's going to be pretty active over there gulf of mexico moisture coming into play here we actually interestingly enough have a low pressure area that makes its way close to the northeast here it kind of disintegrates here but still brings a shower and storm threat to go along with it as we end out this month here 
now as we start next month we see those we see those showers and storms again over towards the great lakes and the pop-up storm set up over the southeast as a whole still of course pretty dry over towards the, the western half of the u.s could be a couple of spotty areas where we could get shower and storm activity it does look like we even start to see a little bit in the way of monsoonal flow starting to come in towards the southwest and i think this is where our saving grace comes in for the region here just got you guys just got to hang in there for a little bit longer here been a little bit of a delayed start to uh, monsoon season over here across the board but hopefully this will help start to mitigate that wildfire threat over here eventually i'd love to see the northwest as well start to get more in the way of moisture here because things are pretty rough over there right now and hopefully we'll start to see a little bit of a snap in that dry spell that we've had but as far as the weather pattern is concerned right now still kind of all over the place uh the severe weather threat continues to be relatively low but of course we have something new to talk about in regards to the wildfire and excessive heat here but that's all i got for you guys thanks for letting me ramble at you guys about the weather here i appreciate you guys uh being patient during the slower times we do have some other stuff to talk about here. Tropics are gonna eventually come back into play here, so just be ready for that. Make sure you're staying on guard if you're towards the uh, coastal states here. But until then, hope you guys have a good rest of your evening and I will see you soon. Signing off, Tyler Middle with Weatherman here.